Well, welcome back to the shop, everyone. Uh, today I am sitting in front of my JD's Garage CNC Plasma Cutter. And as you can see here, I have the total cost of what I spent in both CAD and USD and my grand totals right here. So this grand total in CAD does not include taxes and shipping charges to come from the US to Canada. Um, and this is just converted into USD. So this is how much I spent. Now, I will say that there are some choices that I made, some things that I bought that could have brought that number down, um, but this is what I spent. So let's just quickly break this down. So in metal from my local metal supplier, I spent $406.95 Canadian. Uh, I had them cut it to length. That may have increased the cost. I don't know. They're, on the bill, it doesn't specify whether or not there was any cutting charges. Um, but so let's say maybe there was $50 worth of cutting. That's still, you know, 356 Canadian. So the plans and the 3D printed parts from JD's garage, I spent 157 76 uh, US on that. And that came direct from them. The reason why I did that is while I do have a 3D printer, I think a lot of the prints are like 16 hours uh, for each for a bunch of the different pieces and I just really did not feel like spending all of that time 3d printing So for my electronics for the uh, X and Y I spent 135.63 So that's gonna be things like the bearings the motors the drivers um, What else? Um, yeah, just the motors the bearings the drivers And then for the Z-axis uh, and the water table. So the water table itself, like the stainless steel water table is I think a hundred and some odd dollars, but the Z-axis motor, the driver, um, plus the water table was two twelve twenty five. My enclosure box that you've probably seen, it's where I put all my electronics. Um, and various hookup wires. So that's going to be wires going from the Arduino to the drivers. Um, and I think there was a couple of the standoffs for the relay board that came out to 10223 US. My Z axis springs, uh, those things are unobtainium in Canada. And to buy them in US Amazon and have them shipped to Canada is astronomical. So I found some that aren't exact to spec, but they're working uh, for 1922 Canadian. Uh, so the 182 wire, which is that is going to come out of the power supply and go into each of the motor drivers, I think. That was 5161. Uh, if I recall correctly, that's 182 with the drain. Uh, so that way it's all wired into the grounds and all that good stuff. The USB cable to attach the Arduino to the laptop. Uh, I got a 16 foot one so I can kind of move my laptop around the shop. Uh, you know, that was 1463. Uh, various M3 uh, uh, socket head cap screws, washers. Um, you know, that was the next three here. So that was 12, 26, and 37. Now this is one area I could have saved because I bought this stuff off Amazon and they only sell it in 100 quantities. Could I have driven to my local hardware store, found them, and probably reduced this cost a lot? Yes, I think I could. Uh, a miscellaneous assortment of 1032 socket head cap screws. So we use the 1032s to hold the motors to the plates. Uh, the tensioners to various plates, um, some of the guides, um, I don't know how well you can see this, but like these are 1032 here holding this tensioner down. So you need them of various lengths, so that's what that cost to me. The Arduino was actually cheaper in Canada, that was 42.55 Canadian. Uh, my 22-4 shielded cable, so that's all of the cable that I have coming from the all the cable that I have coming from the drivers to the motors. It's four conductors with the drain wire. That was $51 US. And so that's everything that I have receipts for. 
So there's going to be some miscellaneous stuff in here. So nuts and bolts. Um, is there anything? Uh, grinding discs, right? If you're cutting drill bits, like all of that adds to the cost. Uh, anything else I can think of? I mean, in my build, I use Deutsche connectors for connecting the motors. You obviously don't have to do that. That's a huge expense, which is why I didn't include it on here. Uh, zip ties would be included in there. You know, you need zip ties for various things. Uh, so, yeah, that is my cost breakdown of building the CNC plasma cutter for, you know, 1521 Canadian or roughly 1128 USD. So I hope that answers all of the questions that folks have on what I what I personally spent to build this. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start talking about some of the things that I like about this plasma cutter, some of the things I don't like. Um, and, you know, I've made comments in previous videos that the instructions that JD's Garage uh, supply are good, but they're not great. And I'll give you one quick example here. So on the tube frame dock, the gap between the two bars on the gantry is two inches. But they're specifying to put a 5-inch 3-8 bolt in from the top and the nut on the bottom. It's just physically not possible. I ended up having to undo the two bolts on the side, one bolt on the other side, um, and just kind of lift the bar up. Don't get me wrong, this is something stupidly minor. And you can just put the bolt in from the bottom up. You don't need the bolt coming from the top down. I just... I don't know what it is in my brain. I like following plans, so I made sure that the bolt was coming from the top down. Um, I think in one of my other videos, I commented on a few other um, just inaccuracies. So don't get me wrong. I, I see in the history of JD's Garage that they are constantly updating and making changes and revisions. So... That part is just absolutely phenomenal. And for $25 US for the plans, uh, it's a steal. I mean, it's a great bargain. And as I say, they're constantly updating them. So they're good, not great, uh, but they are being updated all the time. Okay. Um, I don't think I have much more to say there. So let's talk about one of the biggest issues and reason why I'm not using this plasma cutter regularly right now. Okay, so this right here is the open build software. This is what controls the plasma cutter. Well, controls the Arduino, which sends the signals out and blah, 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 blah. So the biggest issue that I have is with the Y axis and that's this way. There is so much weight on this gantry that it pulls it down. So when I'm jogging this left and right, I don't know it, how well you can see this. I'll get some better with a different camera, but this is jagged. This is, this is jumping. And so the head of the cutter is also going like this and jumping. So it's, it's not smooth at all. But if I just lift this up, all of a sudden, everything becomes a little bit smoother. And so I did see in one of, in another, in another YouTuber's video that he actually ended up building a rail on the front here with some bearings so that it picks the front end up. Now, looking at this, we do have adjustments here, okay? So there's three set screws here that push on a rod that will push the bearings in or out. So the problem that we run into with that is if we adjust this, let's say these front ones here, adjust them a little bit. Go half turn or three quarters turn. And then we try and move. Come on, you can do it. It, it, it just can't move. So, 
quarter. Finish that up. Let's go three quarter. So now we're back to moving. So that's the main problem that I have with this is that it's not, it, it doesn't move, it doesn't carry the weight well, and it doesn't move in the Y axis all that reliably. So I'm not sure how well you can see. I'll grab a different camera and get a better picture, but you can see out of the paint that this is running on this bottom bearing here, and it's running on the very top front bearing. So if I try and adjust those in, which would make it jump up, it does not work well at all. Uh, it just, the motor can't overpower the bearings and it doesn't work. Okay, so I'm gonna jump over to a different uh, camera here and I'll show you a little bit more in depth of what I'm talking about with in regards to that. All right, so if we look at our level on the slats, the bubble is, you know, towards the back, which means if I lift it up the front, right, the bubble's gonna go the other way. So the back's just a little bit higher than the front. On the edge of the water table, same thing. Now let's skip up to our gantry. So we've got the level flat on the gantry. And that bubble, let's see if I can zoom in, there you go. Uh, that bubble is very aggressively to the back. So if we lift up the front and put it on one of the front bolts, we can see where the bubble is. And if we come over, that's the gap needed for the gantry to be parallel with the water table and the rest of the frame. So that's like, I don't know, that's a quarter inch plate plus the head. So we're what, three eighths to three eighths of an inch, maybe a half inch drop from the front to the back. So that is why this is so <sighs> unstable. Uh, I'm gonna get you a front on shot of me moving this left and right and you can see exactly how much the head is jumping around. All right, let's jog this thing out. Wrong way. So the X axis, super duper smooth. Like you can kind of see the water here, not moving at all. So when we get this out, now let's do the uh, Y axis. Let's go that way. You can see the whole gantry is just jumping up and down as it moves. And like, look at the plasma head. Look at the water. It's just all over the place. So it does not make for a smooth cut in any way, shape or form. Get you on a little bit closer even. So the next thing is that because of this, we know that the back is higher than the front as far as the gantry is concerned and as far as this table is concerned. So if I drop this down even lower here, get you kind of like right on with this plate. If I drop the Z axis down, bring it up just a bit. So it's just off of the plate. If I drag this X positive, you can see how that gap is ever increasing. I'm not sure how well you can really see it, uh, but it is. Uh, oh, you know what? Here's a great way for me to show that. Well, let's go from the side, actually. That makes more sense. Okay, so over here, you can see I can pretty well get my finger 
under between the head and the plate that's underneath it. And if we scroll this, all the way over, I can no longer get underneath that. So that means, so what that means is that I need to pick this up, you know, three eighths of an inch on the front um, so that I get a nice, good, consistent cut all the way across. And by picking it up, it's going to help alleviate the stress on the back. So I should get a smoother Y axis travel and everything else. Well, folks, that's kind of my high level overview of my JD's Garage CNC plasma cutter, all of my costs that I, you know, associated with the build. Uh, other than time, actually, that's something I didn't talk about because I didn't buy, I didn't realize that the Z axis bill of materials was different than the XY. I didn't order all that stuff at the same time. So as I was ordering or getting farther in the build, I'd realized, shit, I don't have everything I need. So that would just delay me and demotivate me even more. So this, the time it took me was, I think I built this over like six months type thing. Um, and that's just because I'd order parts and get to it when I got to it. I got my car to bill, I got other stuff on the go. Yeah, if anyone has any questions or comments or anything, you know, feel free to, to ask them. I'm, you know, happy to talk about the build or, or anything else. And as always, if you've stuck around this long, I'd like to thank you for viewing and we'll see you in the next one.